Hello and welcome to the sewing studio. Today I'm going to show you how to make a set of placemats using insulating fleece, which is a heat resistant fleece. So I've made one and I've done some cross hatch quilting on this one. I've used a range called Clara's Chickens and I've used some grunge for the binding. So what do you need? So you're going to need a rectangle of this insel fleece. And what this is, is it's silvery foil texture on one side and it's fluffy on the other side. And how this works is it reflects the heat source back upwards. So if you're using it as a placemat, you have the foil side where your plate is going to go. So it's looking at me this way, so I would put the top part of my placemat on top. If I was making oven mitts, however, it would be the opposite way because the heat source would be there and I would be putting my hand in there and that would be against the heat of the oven. So wherever you want the heat to reflect back to, that's where your silver part should be. So for these, I have cut six rectangles of chicken fabric and these measure nine inches by 12 inches. I've used this backing piece here, which I think just looks like a chicken's cage. So that's the back. And my rectangle of insel fleece. So all of these measure nine by 12. And I'm going to sandwich those together and remembering that I want my silver side uppermost. So I'm going to use these curved basting pins here just to hold it in place because I'm not going to spray this. So I'm just going to put a couple of these curved pins in to hold all of my layers. And as it's a small piece, we don't need too, too much in the way of pinning. And don't worry about this because we just trim it all off after we've done the quilting. So our next job is to quilt from corner to corner a diagonal to hold it in place. And you'll see that I've taken the pins out. And then what I've done, because I've done it a bit like a cross hatch because I want it to look like a chicken's cage. I've used one of these Hera markers to mark where I want my quilting to go. So I'll show you how these work. So instead of you using a pen or a pencil, so I've, I've already done the cross, as you can see, I've gone across there and across there corner to corner. And now I'm going to measure an inch and a half out from my stitch line. So I'm putting my inch and a half measurement on here. Let me just make sure I've got that at an inch and a half. There we are. So my inch and a half measurement out from my stitch line. And with my Hera marker, I'm just going to mark the fabric. And what this does is it gives a lovely dent for me to sew into. So I'm going to do two of those and we're going to go to the machine. So I'm going to mark another one an inch and a half away from that dent and so on. And then the other way. So you get this lovely cross hatching. So we're just going to go to the machine now and we're going to sew down where we've got this nice mark that we can follow. So we're going to go to the sewing machine now. So I'm just going to sew down this line here that I've marked with my Hero marker. I've got a walking foot on. And then I'm going to sew down the other line that I've marked. And then I'm going to show you how to mark the other lines and I'm going to mark the whole thing and then I'm going to sew it all. So now I'm going to mark the other lines. So I'm going to mark the opposite way now. And I would mark all of my lines before going back to the sewing machine. So I'd mark one there 
an inch and a half and there. So all the time I'm putting my measuring line in the dent that I've just made. And I would do that until I had got all of my lines marked and then I would machine them. And I've just used a regular straight stitch with my walking foot on and you can see that I've done all this cross hatching on this one. So the next thing is to trim it up. So I just gave it a slither trim just to tidy up. If you remember, I said to you not to worry too much about that. So I just gave it a bit of a tidy up all the way around. And then to put your binding on, you need a piece of fabric measuring two and a half inches. And I've already cut this one and I've folded it in half wrong sides together. So the right side is looking up at me. And then I would just pin this on and I'm going to make sure that my gap for where I join it up is, is not right in the middle at the top or the bottom. I'm just going to make it offset at the side so you don't see the join so much. And then you pop this on like this. So you're pinning your binding with the right side to your placemat, right sides to right sides. And when you do your mitered corners, you just need to fold in to make a diagonal and then flip up your material so that you can see that you've got a nice crisp corner. So when you come to the machine to machine that down, you'll have a lovely mitered corner. You do that all the way round and when it's machined on, you do your join and then you fold it back on itself and you just slip stitch the back down. So if you look at this one, just tiny little slip stitching. And that's your placemat using the heat resistant wadding. So you can go on, you can make four, six, you could even make a table runner, you could make some mug rugs. You don't have to use chicken fabric, you can use floral fabric. So as always, have fun and I look forward to seeing you next time here in the sewing studio.